pretty sure most everybody remembers using VHS tapes. And if you're like me, I'm pretty sure you remember the quality being pretty bad. But I got to thinking about it, and I'm, I began to wonder, was the quality bad because the format was bad, or was it my fault? Um, for example, most of the material I had on VHS was recorded from television. And to make matters worse, I typically used the EP speed setting so that I could fit more on a tape. And even uh, the store-bought tapes that I had were mastered with old analog and duplication methods. Of course, all of my home movies were recorded directly from camcorders, and I think the quality of the cameras varied greatly from one brand to the next. For example, this video of me in 1987 actually doesn't look too bad. I was 12 years old here. Now, this video of me in 1992 was on a totally different camera, and the quality looks pretty terrible. So I thought it was time for some experiments. Um, I went up to the attic and got my old VCR down. You can see it's been a while since this thing was used. I suspect the last time it was used was 15 or 16 years ago. I cleaned it off and then I decided to open it up and clean the head and all of the other moving parts inside. Then it was time to insert a tape and see if it still actually worked. And amazingly, it does. These things are actually a marvel of engineering. You know, watching it here on this CRT television, it looks surprisingly good. But when I connect it up to my video capture device and bring it into the digital world, it looks surprisingly bad. And I think the modern video displays are crisp enough to really allow you to see the imperfections where the old CRTs are not. I also wondered about some other things like, how many times has this tape been played? Maybe it's just worn out. And I also wondered about the composite video format. Maybe, maybe that's just the limit of what the composite video format has to offer. And I also wondered about the mastering and duplication processes used back in the 80s and 90s. So I decided to create a few tests of my own. First of all, I bought a brand new old stock copy of Back to the Future on VHS. Now this baby has never been opened before. In fact, I kind of feel bad for opening it, but I'll do it in the name of science. So in this experiment, I'll be using my Western Digital Live TV since it has a composite video output. Then I'm going to connect it directly to my video capture device on my PC and record a scene from Back to the Future. Now this copy of the movie is a 1080p version that's been ripped from Blu-ray and offers the benefit of being digitally remastered copy of the movie. This will give us an idea of exactly what the limit of the composite video format is. I'll refer to this as the direct composite for the rest of the episode. Then I'm going to connect my VCR to my PC and record the same clip from the original tape. I'll refer to this as the original 1985 VHS. And then I'm going to do one more thing. I've bought this Maxell broadcast quality VHS tape. This is what the professionals used back in the day. If you look at the two tapes side by side, you can see this one is slightly darker material than the other. In audio cassettes, the darker usually means better quality. I'm assuming the same is true here. And then I'm going to record from the Western Digital Live TV straight to this tape. And then I'm going to play the tape back and record it to my PC. It'll be interesting to see whether my copy looks better than the original 1985 version. So the results are in. Here's a clip from the 1080p version just for a point of reference. Now I'm playing all of these with a mirror image so hopefully it'll keep YouTube from dinging me with copyright infringement even though I'm definitely using these under fair use. I don't know if that helps or not but it's worth a shot. Now here's the version I recorded directly from composite video. By the way, I'm not modifying these clips in any way. I'm not deinterlacing them or zooming in to cut out the letterbox. I want you to see them exactly as they are. And here's the version I recorded onto my own tape. It actually looks better than I really thought it would. And um, here's the version from the original 1985 VHS tape. Wow, that looks terrible. Okay, so we had a nice bright daylight scene. How about a dark night scene to compare? So here's the direct composite. And here is the version I recorded onto tape. And here's the original 1985 VHS. So let's look at some close-ups. I've snapped some individual frames that we can look at more closely because it's really hard to zoom into an interlaced video when it's playing. So this is from the direct composite. 
Now, this doesn't actually look too bad. There's definitely some clues that this is from a composite video, though. If you look around the edge of Jennifer's face, and even Marty's to some degree, you'll see sort of a checkerboard pattern. This is typical composite artifacting. And if you look at any sharp edges, like the edge of her clothes or Marty's striped shirt, you'll see some rainbow color fringing. That's another effect of composite video. You can even see some fringing on the trees, like in this area here. But this is essentially DVD quality, if DVD were being played on a composite device. Now, let's look at the frame from my recording. Interestingly enough, most of the color fringing is gone, and I suspect it is due to the softening of the image, so the sharp edges are gone. One area you can see this in really clearly is if you compare the trees, you'll see a lot of the detail is blurred in the VHS recording as compared to the straight composite. Also, if you look at the columns on the clock tower, on the composite version, you can actually make out some of the detail of the rock pattern, but on the VHS version, it just looks like one solid piece. Now take a look at the original 1985 VHS. And you can see in this version that the trees have lost all of their detail completely. The columns on the clock tower look even worse, but there's just generally a lot of noise in this picture, even in the sky. Also, there's a white glow around Marty's head. So let's go through them real quickly so you can see the differences. So let's look at a dark scene. Uh, this is the direct composite signal again, just like last time. This doesn't look too bad. You can still see some of that color fringing effect here. An interesting side note is that uh, if I had used S-Video instead of composite, this effect would be gone. But VHS is not capable of S-Video, so I don't think there was any point. Okay, so here's my recording. And you can see some noise has been added to the image, and the JCPenney logo has some color artifacts now. And uh, here's the uh, original 1985 VHS, and wow, very noisy image. Well, apparently the composite video signal can actually carry a better signal than VHS is capable of even taking advantage of. But the other thing that I learned, and, and I think this surprised me more than anything else, is that I can actually record my own movies and have them better quality than the factory original tapes. And I would also like to point out that this VCR I'm using is a very low-end product. It was a low-end product back in the 1990s when I bought it. Uh, it was, you know, it's a two-head. Oh, and by the way, uh, despite what I've been told my whole life, apparently four-head VCRs are no better quality than two-head VCRs when playing a regular tape in SP speed. They do have some advantages when um, doing fast forward and rewind as far as, and uh, also playing at EP speeds. But for the tests I'm doing, apparently there would have been no difference. Okay, so I would have liked to also shown a comparison with S-Video. Um, the problem is, as far as I know, no VHS players actually support S-Video because much like Laserdisc players, the actual signal encoded onto the tape is actually a composite signal. There is no stored separation of the color burst signal versus the luminance signal. So uh, the other problem, of course, is that my uh, Western Digital device also does not have a S-Video output on it. So if I happen to own a DVD player and a DVD copy of Back to the Future, I might have been able to show you at least an S-Video example from that, but I, I don't own that. So, so to answer the original question, um, yes, I think VHS tapes are just as bad as we remember them, but um, I think they could have been a lot better had we just used higher quality tapes, both at home and you know, at the studio where they're they're being duplicated and mastered out to um, to all the consumers. <laughs>